So my name is Sudeep Pokert and I'm a research scientist here at the Sweetie Center for Environmental Biotechnology at the Biodesign Institute of ASU. And I work with microbial electrochemical cells to recover energy from various waste streams that are present in the environment. I am Cesar Torres. I am an assistant professor in a chemical engineering program and part of the Sweetie Center for Environmental Biotechnology. And most of my research involves uh, bioenergy, so basically using microorganisms to produce energy. And the microbial fuel cell research is uh, the, my main line of research. So a microbial fuel cell is kind of a fuel cell in which the anode reaction is catalyzed by microorganisms. So certain microorganisms that are called anode respiring bacteria, they break down organics that are present in wastewater and convert them to electrons that move through the circuit to the cathode. Uh, the key advantage of having a microbial fuel cell for something like wastewater treatment is that we can actually harvest the energy that is present in the organic content of the wastewater. It's only one process that, that is uh, occurring in which organic waste get, gets treated and electricity is produced at the same time. So basically we are unlocking the energy contained in the waste. So microbial fuel cells are unlike any other bioreactors that have been developed before. Essentially these are electrochemical cells that include a biological component. So you need of course knowledge from microbiology, from bioinformatics, but you also need knowledge from chemical engineering, environmental engineering, where you look at how these reactors can be designed. You also need material science as an integrative part of the design element so that materials that are uh, less expensive, that are easy to produce, can be made uh, very easily as well. One of the key challenges that we see in uh, implementing this in the field is the fact that this is both a biological reactor and ele an electrochemical reactor. So doing the design of this system um, is quite challenging. Over the years of research that we've done on microbial fuel cells, we've figured out that it is actually the cathode reaction, the one where the bacteria are not involved but we use a metal catalyst that limits the power densities that we can achieve in these systems. And this is very surprising because the same catalyst in chemical fuel cells, such as the proton exchange membrane fuel cells, allow reaching power densities that are two to three orders of magnitude higher. So we wanted to really understand why the same catalyst that we use in chemical fuel cells when they are put in microbial fuel cells uh, limit the performance of these systems. And in the past, nafion, which is a cationomer or a binder that allows transport of protons, has been used as, as, as the binder. Um, instead, we figured out that we want to replace this and we tried a new binder, which is called AS4, which has the property of conducting anions, or in this case, hydroxide ions. Um, so when we replaced the binder, we found that we have increased performance of the cathode. What we've uh, done here is a mechanistic study to understand how the cathode uh, operates. An important uh, characteristic of anode respiring bacteria is that they use the anode as their electron acceptor. Uh, the same way that we uh, use oxygen as our terminal electron acceptor. If we don't have oxygen, we die. And the same way anode respiring bacteria need the electrode or they die. Uh, the mechanisms of this electron transfer to the, to the anode are still largely unknown. And there is a very uh, interesting debate in the field on the specific ways in which bacteria take electrons out of their cells and transfer them to an anode.